All Saints this year um, has, a, I guess, a special, more special meaning for me because my mother is one of the saints that we are remembering. Uh, it seems that in October and November of each year, we seem to have a family crisis. So I don't think I'm going to look forward to October and November next year too much. But as I thought about my mom and tried to remember how she still surrounds me, uh, when mother died, we, my sisters and I looked at her stuff. And, and all of you can relate to this. You, you go through the stuff. As you look at what she has surrounded herself with all her life, it reminds you of her family, of those that she cared for, you know, the mementos as well as all the pictures. The funny things that, that you find, um, found a letter I had written my mother when I was 11 years old. I didn't write very well back then, but she had kept it. She had kept it all those years, and a picture my younger sister had drawn for her at the age of eight, and another letter my older sister had written her sometime in college, and on and on and on, and all these things that reminded her of who she was, the things that surrounded her. And in those moments when we closed the house, and many of you have been through this experience, when you go and you get rid of everything and you realize that your, your home as you grew up is now going to belong to someone else. That your mom or your dad or whoever it is will not live there anymore. And there's a part of you that wonders, will anybody remember them? Will they be forgotten because they're gone? And so you take the mementos home for you that means something to you, and you surround yourself with that person. I have pictures of my mom in every room where I sit. I have the ring that she wore on my finger. It has not left my finger since she died. I wear her necklace daily, the daily necklace that I wear. It's a Methodist cross to remind me that she is not forgotten, that she has been an example to me and to many others, and she is still among us. And you know all the cards you get at a time like that. Most of them are, I guess you'd call it worldly cards. You know, we're sorry for your loss. Uh, but occasionally you, you'll get one that even says, you know, may, may God strengthen you. But as I read this passage today, wouldn't it be really great if the quote from 1 Kings was on a card? that said, no one like your loved one has ever been before, and no one like your loved one will ever be again. Thanks be to God in whose loving care they now rest for always. Think about that. The people that we're thinking of today, no one like them has ever lived, and no one like them will ever live again. We're all unique, and we're celebrating the uniqueness of people. And I began thinking about the white candles that I usually put up here, and I thought, well, that's kind of silly. They all look the same. So I went and got different ones. And I told the folks that are going to light the candles, I said, pick out the one that reminds you of the person you're lighting the candle for, for whatever reason. We're all unique, and we will never be again. I like that, but I also remember the pain of losing someone that we love. Losing someone out of your own personal family or out of our church family is painful. And you think 
They're never going to be here again, and it brings sadness to your heart. And then you think they're never going to be here again, and it brings joy to your heart because you realize where they are. They are in a wonderful place. No more pain, no more suffering, no more of the stuff of human life but rather a joyous place with a loving and kind God. I also thought it would really be neat if we got cards. There's a a, a Kaddish prayer that's called the morning prayer from our Jewish brothers and sisters, and I read it, and it doesn't talk about morning. M-O-U-R, morning. It doesn't talk about grief. It doesn't talk about sadness. It talks about... Praising God, exalting God, lifting up God. And I thought about that a minute and realized that instead of focusing on our grief and our pain, let's, not, let's focus on the praising God for sharing this life with us, for giving us the strength to keep going, for loving us enough to take us into God's heavenly home. You know, Christianity is a a strange faith, if you think about it. And yet we, we celebrate all parts of life, and you know death is a part of life. And when we come together at a funeral or at a memorial service, we are both grieving our loss, that we will not see this person, but we are celebrating their life. We are celebrating the gift that God has given us through this person. We are celebrating that their struggle is somehow over. That brings us joy. So it's, it's one of those strange things that goes back and forth. We gather today to remember, to honor, to give thanks, to be encouraged by these people who have died and whose lives we celebrate. If you forgot to bring a candle, that's okay. There are four or five extra candles up here that won't get lit. So if you want to come up and light one of those, that's fine. If you forgot, that's okay too. Bring it next week. And even if you don't light a candle, that doesn't mean you can't come up here and remember them during the service. We come to celebrate their lives, to look at their example. And to let them know that God says they will never be forgotten. And we say they will never be forgotten. We do things to help us not forget, don't we? One of the uh, traditions in Luster's family is to name someone after someone. Which is also a great Jewish tradition. Where else do you think they could have come up with a name like Luster? (laughs) Amen. I was waiting for that. And when when we call that person by that name, we not only remember them, but we remember the one from which we got the name. My first name is strange, but I know that the first three letters in my first name came from my mother, Dorothy. I have no idea where the rest of them came from. My name is Dorsa. It is spelled D-O-R-C-I-A. It doesn't look like Dorsa. It doesn't vaguely resemble Dorsa, but that was my name. And I know the D-O-R came from my mom. I know that the Francis in my sister's name came from my mom's middle name. I know that my granddaughter was named after my mother's maiden name, and that is Shelby. My mother's maiden name was Shelburne, and so they named him Shelby. I know that my youngest grandson was na- middle name came from my dad, Jack. That means something to us that they are not forgotten even by their great-great-grandchildren who did not know them. It means something. And when we look at 
our loved one's library card or their social security card or their driver's license. We feel a pain of sadness. And yet we feel a sense of joy at the same time. I have my mom's driver's license, her social security card, her blue cross, blue shield, whatever that was, all in my little cedar box. Because no one like her has ever been before and no one like her will ever be again. That's what we're saying to these three women. That's what you're saying today to the people that you honor on top of these three women who have died over the last year. No one like her has ever lived before and no one like her will ever be again. We value her, we embrace her, we honor her memory by living by the best example that she set during her earthly days. Let us give thanks and let us bring peace. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, and I believe they are saying this to us, which comes from a Native, Native American prayer. They would say to you and me, every one of them, I give you this one thought to keep. I am with you still. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the sweet uplifting rush. Of quiet birds in circled flight, I am the soft starts that shine at night. Do not think of me as gone. I am with you still in each dawn. Let us remember these and all as the witnesses that surround us this day. Let us pray.